Hey, hey guys, how you doing? Nice to be here. I'm sorry this video is late, um, but here we are. And regardless of what day it is, happy Homebrew Wednesday. <laughs> okay, here we are. Um, got a few things I want to talk about today. I'm not really doing anything or brewing anything special right now. But I thought this there was some stuff that was homebrew related that I would like to cover. Um, as far as what I'm, you know, what I'm having in, what, or enjoying right now, I actually don't have any homebrew. My keg went dry yesterday. Sad face. <laughs> so I had to, you know, I had to gather some other things together. I did have a little uh, bit of rum laying around and some ginger ale. So I just made myself a rum and ginger for, for this for this video. I got some homemade wine and stuff later on. We'll have a glass of that. But cheers anyway. I am brewing a um, another Cooper's Canadian Blonde. Um, because I like that, but I'm trying something new recently, and I'm going to show you before we get into the the word thing. I used to brew these years ago. Now this is a canned pre-hopped can kit. Okay, so not everybody, you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but for those of us who brew to save money, it is a handy thing to do. And as you know, I do this quite often. And if you know how to, you know, brew these things and soup them up and make them work, you get some damn good beer out of it, okay? This is Brew Canada, and um, I know that all you guys aren't going to be able to get this because you don't live in Canada, but I don't know if they export them, but um, I can get them, and there's four different varieties. This is a uh, Canadian red uh, beer, and I used to brew these years ago. And I was never really, you know, eh, they're all right, you know, there was nothing wrong with them, but they were, you know, there was nothing all that, you know, special or anything about them. Um, basically, sort of just the same as the Cooper's ones, really, and they tasted great if you did them properly. But the last time I brewed one of these, which was about three months ago, I noticed uh, a difference in the hops they, they added in there. In fact, I could, I could actually see little bits of hops in, in, in the extract. And I could smell them. So um, I've decided to go back to these and try. There's four different varieties that I can get. And I'm going to give them a whirl and see what they're like. And if you can get them, um, hey, what the heck? Why not? So I'll brew this up and I'll tell you how it turns out. Um, and, you know, we'll put, we'll put some extra, you know, malt extract in there and whatnot. I'll probably do the five and seven thing. Okay. So that's 500 grams of dry malt extract, 700 grams of dextrose, just to give it a boost. All right. Um, and we'll, we'll brew that up and see how that works out. So that's what we're going to be doing. I already have, I'm exact, it's actually interesting, the yeast they put in with this is a uh, sterling. I've never, never heard of that. But uh, anyway, so we'll just do it, see what we get. All right. I'm too busy to do any, ex you know, extra uh, all grains or anything like that right now. It's too much. Uh, spring, and the, I've got to clean my backyard out, and I've got to, you know, get the garden ready and stuff. So, simple brewing for me right now. All right, let's get on. Speaking of brewing, huh? What does it mean? when you brew. If you're making one of these, and I've had, I've been scrutinized in the past for not being a home brewer if I'm, if I'm making these, these canned, you know, simple beer kits. Okay. And, you know, just so you know, if you don't already, I've already, I've done all grain. I do all grain. I do partial extracts. I do mini matches. I do all the, the methods. It depends on what time, you know, how much time I have and what are, you know, what I feel like doing, right? That's the freedom of it, is that you, you can do it the way you want. <laughs> nobody, nobody has the right to tell you how to do it. You do it the way it works for you. I've always advocated this. Don't ever let somebody criticize you, like on a forum, or, you know, if they do, just tell them to bugger off, okay? You, you make the stuff the way it works for you. Some people brew for the hobby, some people brew to save money, some people do it for both, 
and everyone's got their own thing and it's just like everything else I mean like it's, just, it's like collecting vinyl or, or you know motorcycles or you know any other hobby you can think of audio equipment or whatever there's always going to be people out there who, who are purists and who think that it needs to be there's only one way to do stuff their way well that's I don't work that way and uh, I think that's you know that's just bullshit so pardon my language um, there are ways of doing things that work for everybody and everybody's different everyone has a different drum to beat so you know we shouldn't be criticizing people for doing it how it works for them now but the the thing is is that I was doing a little bit of Google searching the other day to try and find out if anybody was selling my music illegally because I've seen this happen before where there's been CDs available of my original music for sale and uh, that's not fair that's called piracy that's called um, bootlegging if you will I mean I'm not totally innocent you know I do play music on my live broadcast that's not mine but I'm not making any money off of it you know um, but these people are clearly just pressing CDs of my music and selling them online you know for 10 bucks 10 bucks 15 bucks or whatever so I've had to get you know these people I've had to get after them and say hey this is not your thing you can't sell this all right uh, I give it away for free and at this point at this point that might change I, I, I it'll probably always be free but um, so I'm on the line looking up this thing anyway and I'm finding this I found this post on a forum and um, they were talking about me and this is back in 2008 so it was pretty early in my YouTube you know uh, adventure if you will um, and I was brewing the kits the can kits you know home brewing the easy way with the bum sweatshirt the whole bit and um, amongst other things I lots of derogatory comments about you know my hair and my you know my shirt and how I'm doing it my method and this you know all this crap you know whatever um, it was a while ago and uh, I've cleaned up my act quite a bit so <laughs> I'm not worried about it but one of the things that somebody said was he's not even brewing he's just mixing stuff together and I read this this was two days ago I read this you know that was an old post 2008 or something like that so I'm not you know it's it's water under the bridge but I thought to myself hmm what is brewing what is the meaning of it so I looked it up and I I looked up several different sources and I've got something here for you that I'll put up on the screen and let's let's have a look and see what this says okay okay so number one to make beer ale etc by steeping boiling and fermenting malt and hops okay so now I'm getting scared I'm like, oh no, <laughs> we're not really, we're not really home brewers if we brew simple, you know, beer kits. Well, let's move on here. Number two, to make or prepare a beverage as tea by mixing, steeping, soaking, or boiling a solid in water. Now, if you look at the wording there, mixing, steeping, soaking, or boiling any of those things on their own could be considered brewing the word or says that okay number three to concoct mix or cook a beverage or food especially one containing unmeasured or unusual ingredients I don't know why that okay so it sounds to me like brewing is kind of like it's like the witch with the cauldron, you know, ah, making the, the potion, you know, she's brewing up a potion, you know, and it's made of stuff that, you know, we don't really know what it, what's in it or anything. It's just a, it's a concoction that's being mixed together or brewed. 
it doesn't just from what I, what I get from this is it doesn't just mean boiling, steeping, putting hops in. You know, like when you brew tea, you make tea, you put a tea bag in, and it soaks for a while, and then you get the you know the extracts out of the tea bag, and then you you know you have tea, and that's brewing tea. But when you think of coffee, like when you brew, you know, a pot of coffee, and people do refer to it as brewing, you're basically, the conventional way is to run hot water through a bed of, of coffee, ground coffee grains, through, and through a filter and, and, you know, extract the color and the flavor from, from the coffee grains, right? Sort of like steeping tea bags or grains that we use for brewing, right? From what I'm getting from here, I have to say that I think we've pretty much established, and sorry you guys on the forum there that are probably not even watching this video, um, brewing doesn't have to involve, involve brew, uh, boiling, steeping. According to this, it could just mean mixing stuff, brewing up a soup, brewing up a chili, mixing stuff together, and coming out with something different. Combining individual, individual ingredients and coming, coming up with something. So I'm relieved, and so should you be, all you kit guys. When you brew these beer kits, you're a home brewer. Simple as that. So now we can breathe a sigh of relief. And you can look this up yourself. There's other definitions up, up out there that, you know, uh, refer to the same idea that it doesn't always have to be steeping, boiling, or whatever. It can just be to concoct, mix, or cook. It's always a learning experience when you look at how people react to stuff. For me, being on YouTube for uh, since 2006, I've learned a lot about how people react to stuff, and you learn from that. And then you gain insight as to, you know, how to do, how to present things to people so that they're comfortable with it. Now that we know that we're safe with the term brewing, even though we're not steeping or boiling anything, we're uh, good to go with that. And now that is cleared up as far as I'm concerned. People should really do their research before they jump in and say stuff like that. One guy was like, he uses these carbonation drops. What the hell are those? <laughs> these people have no idea, or they had no idea, of a different way to, to do things. They were stuck to their way, you know, whatever way that was. It's a little ignorant to, to put yourself, to put ideas out there like that without knowing what you're talking about, I guess. And look, I'm not perfect, man. I do the same thing. I'm sure I've said lots of stuff that's been, you know, debatable or whatever. And I'm I'm open to, uh, you know, to being corrected. And uh, for example, the uh, freeze distilling. Okay, and um, you know, I decided to look this up because I got some comments a few weeks ago on a video that I did, tasting some Applejack that was freeze distilled. Quote unquote. It turns out, and let's get this out in the open right now, that freeze distilling is actually a, a misnomer. It's not really distilling. It's kind of a slang sort of term. Um, we think of distilling as, you know, separating the alcohol from the water and making something stronger, um, more concentrated by boiling it and extracting, you know, the steam and recondensing it. And, and that's your, dist call, that's called distillant. All right. Um, freeze distilling is different. You take the beverage, the wine or whatever it is, and you freeze it. And what happens is the water will freeze, but the alcohol won't. But it's not as, as simple as that. And I'm going to put a link down below in the com and or the, you know, the docs down below. Uh, the information section to a Wikipedia uh, uh, article that I found very interesting about freeze distilling, which is actually called fractional freezing. 
and uh, that's the proper term for it. So, you know, we can call it freeze distilling all we want, but in actual fact, a few guys were, they were right. It's not actually distilling. It's uh, different. Um, and uh, as far as the safety of it goes, I'm not going to get into that. I think that it depends on what you're freeze distilling, what fruit was used, or what substance was used to create, you know, the alcohol in the first place. Because some substances will produce more methanol than others, and then when you freeze distill it, that can get concentrated, and you, there could be times when it could be dangerous to do. And that's why I don't do it. Um, but I've tasted other people's Applejack, and I've, I'm still here, so um, I assume they, they know what they're doing, and there's no problem. But it is something to be aware of that when you're doing distilling or fractional freezing, I should say, that depending on what you fermented in the first place to make the um, substance that you're going to distill or that you're going to fractional freeze, different substances like different fruits do produce different amounts of methanol, which is dangerous. So you gotta have you have to be careful what you're what you're distilling or what you're sorry what you're freeze <laughs> freeze fra fractional freezing <laughs> um, because if it's made with something that produces a lot of methanol and you're going to get a concentration of that so a lot of research is, needs to be done when you're messing around with this stuff before you get in and do it because you know you don't want to hurt yourself and get sick so. Anyway, I think I'm out of time, and I appreciate your... Oh, by the way, hey, thanks for all your comments on my uh, beef jerky video. <laughs> yeah, that's another one I got flack. It's not really jerky unless you do this, that, and... Some guy was like, you know, this is a disgrace, you know, you should have a steamer. Or not a steamer, a, a, a smoker to do this. The whole point of the video was to show you how to do it if you don't have one of those things. Not all of us have one. I don't have one. I don't have room for one. And so if you want to make beef jerky, or whatever it's called, I looked it up and I seem to think that beef jerky is a safe definition for it. If we want to pull hair, split hairs, uh, you know, okay. Um, that's another whole video, I guess. But at any rate, to, to make the beef jerky, um, and you don't have a s smoker, it can be done in the oven. And I see that some of you guys have tried it and had success with it. So, to any of those purists out there who think that you have to do it a certain way, once again, there are ways of doing things for us people who don't have all the right tools, and we can still accomplish the same end result. And uh, that's the freedom that we have, and uh, that's what I, I personally strongly promote. And I'm, I'm very happy with the results in the comments in that video. So thank you for watching it and enjoy, you know, your, your beef jerky, however you make it. If you have a smoker, beautiful. Make it with a smoker or a food dehydrator or whatever the heck you've got. Hell, I mean, geez, you could probably make it in an easy bake oven if you needed to, I don't know. But anyway, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Cheers. And uh, I don't have a, a homebrew, I'm sorry. But anyways, uh, be safe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.